Thank you, um, Mr. President. Well, there seems to be some agreement in the House today that uh, even if this pact is adopted and ratified, which is, of course, very far from a foregone conclusion, if Mr. Swoboda is right about what happens in France and other countries, it will, of course, do nothing to solve this current crisis. And as a, as a fiscal conservative myself, I should, of course, be delighted that we are enshrining fiscal discipline, balanced budgets within national laws and constitutions. However, as a Democrat, what greatly concerns me is that an electorate's ability to vote for a high-spending Keynesian economic policy is effectively being removed from them. Mr. President, we are making socialism illegal. And this, uh, this pact is eff effectively rendering all elections null and void across much of Europe. So let me say this, as a free market conservative myself who finds much to admire in the German model of fiscal and monetary discipline, we cannot impose our vision by force of law, we must also use force of argument. We need to show that austerity is not forever, there is light at the end of a tunnel. But as long as we cut off the possibility of a member state leaving the euro, then we block that tunnel. We condemn many countries to years of deflation, of poverty and of emigration with no end in sight. Recovery won't come to many of the countries in southern Europe, in my view, until they are free to reissue their own currencies and to price their way back into the market. And nor, of course, can we preach austerity to them unless we practice it ourselves. Imagine how a European summit looks with its banquets, its motorcycle outriders, the armies of hangers-on, must look to a public sector worker who is facing redundancy because of government cutbacks. Imagine how taxpayers in our home countries feel when every pound or euro saved in domestic spending is swallowed up by higher contributions to the EU budget. My group makes no apologies for being single-minded about the single market. And we will continue to pursue this agenda of creating the single market further, of further extending services and reviewing procurement rules to encourage innovation. We will continue to push for better implementation of existing single market rules. And of course, opening the single market would be pointless unless we continue to open our markets to the rest of the world, the parts of the world, that is, that where there is still growth happening. But many of these actions are in the medium and the long term. But there is one action that we could take right here, right now, to show businesses our commitment to growth. Surely one of the best ways for the EU to speed up growth is to scrap the Employment and Social Affairs Directorate in the Commission, repatriate its responsibilities to national governments. Then we could scrap the Working Time Directive, the Agency Workers Directive, the Pregnant Workers Directive, and all of the other barriers to actually employing people if we really want to create jobs in Europe. Because, of course, we can't create those jobs by talking about them, by passing resolutions. In fact, we, Eurocrats and MEPs, can't actually create any jobs at all. What we can do is get out of the way and allow entrepreneurs to invent things, to make things and to sell things. That's where employment growth comes from and it's also where social security comes from. When I was a new MEP, we had something called the Lisbon Agenda. It was supposed to make Europe the most dynamic, knowledge-based economy in the world by 2010. As Sarah Palin might have put it, Mr. President, how's that working out for you? <laughs>